All right, so we're going to be going through everything uh, Office 365 today. I really do appreciate everybody being here. My name is Jesse, and I'll be your presenter for today. Um, yeah, so thanks for being here. I really hope everybody else is being safe out there. I know it's uncertain times right now, uh, and I do know that everybody is getting used to some new technology out there, so uh, hopefully this webinar will help with that new technology that you have been uh, trying to get used to. So this will be just an overview of all of the 365 uh, applications. Well, not, not every single one of them, but at least the ones that I did feel uh, were you know, super useful for collaborating over the internet and, and working remotely and that sort of thing. Also, uh, nearing the end of the presentation, I'll also go through and show you some of our free resources. So we do have up on our website a bunch of uh, stuff to help you learn uh, and help you along with uh, some free resources. So I'll definitely uh, give you that at the very end of the training session. Again, thanks so much uh, for being here today. I will open up just by giving a little bit about myself. So um, just my name is Jesse, as I mentioned, and my um, I'm, I'm super happy, super humbled to be here with the uh, JN Software and CompuEase team. Um, and of course, you're going to ask me why uh, that I'm so happy with JN Software and, and CompuEase, that, that team. Uh, it's just because we focus so much on the students. Everybody around me is focused so much on, on, on the end customer. I really do believe in the business model that we, we have for sure, because we just make sure that everybody learns what they came here to learn. Um, also, my favorite part about teaching is that I love to see people uh, just kind of, there's, there's a little light bulb. I know it's a cliche, but it's true. Uh, there is a little light bulb that you see go off in people's head when they realize how much time uh, they're going to, how much less time they're going to spend at work, um, as well as, you know, some new tips and tricks that they've already always wanted to learn but never really had the opportunity to. Uh, and fun fact about myself, I am a huge coffee nerd and I can't state that enough. <laughs> so so uh, I've been doing a lot with coffee, especially recently because I've been at home so much and I'm a competitive pool player, which of course I, I don't do right now just simply because well, it's uh, nobody's going out right now. So that's unfortunate, but hopefully we'll get back to that soon. Uh, a little bit about JN Software and CompUE is they are sister companies and they do provide services throughout Canada. So JN Software is uh, training, consulting, database development, uh, and it's Canada wide, whereas uh, CompUE is training in the Ottawa area and the national capital region. Uh, JN Software Consulting provides training. So they do online public classes with a live instructor and private online and on site training, as well as consulting and database development. Uh, CompuEase, on the other hand, other hand, they provide on-site public training at the downtown Ottawa Training Center, so hopefully we'll get back to that uh, soon. Um, but also, they provide private and one-on-one -on -one training either on-site or online. Uh, we were actually quite fortunate when this all went down that we had been doing online training for such a long uh, time outside of this. Uh, so the tran transition from kind of doing it in person to doing it online was fairly seamless uh, for us. So just just a heads up on that. And of course, what they both provide is fast quality customer service, highly skilled, experienced, and professional trainers like yours truly, and uh, public classes with a schedule guaranteed to run classes that do run often. Um, so I can't stress that enough. I know a lot of our competitors, they like to uh, not run courses if there's not enough people in them. We're always going to run courses, even if there's only one person uh, that's scheduled to be in the course, in a public course. Uh, guess what? That one person just gets extremely lucky, lucky to get in a one-on-one, -on -one very personal uh, course. Uh, so we always run our courses. We also do have a learn or come back free policy on all of our classes. 24-7 uh, after training support for all software training. So if you are like me <laughs> and uh, you think of your question, you know, 10 minutes after training is done and you've left the room, uh, well then we have 24-7 support for that so you can ask your questions even after the training has been completed. And finally, we do offer uh, both software and professional skills training. I know a lot of people think of us as mostly a software company 
And we are, we're very good at that. Uh, but also we are a professional skills company. So um, some, some courses, you know, such as um, writing briefing notes and, and stuff like that, uh, we do offer those types of courses. One last thing that I'll mention before I get into our course outline is we do have this brand new training and consulting audit that we're super excited to offer you. It is completely free, uh, doesn't take a lot of time, just a few basic questions. So we'll schedule some time with you to ask a few basic questions. And then again, free, you get this nice report that you come uh, home with, with anything, uh, any recommendations that we might be able to provide you in terms of, you know, maybe some training things to uh, fill some gaps in your knowledge or, or your team's knowledge and that sort of thing. Um, so you'll be able to increase your productivity, improve your, your team communication and that sort of thing. Also, uh, if you do have some database needs, we also do uh, database development. So you can definitely update your current database. So we might provide some recommendation. Uh, the recommendations will be either, you know, free uh, resources that we uh, offer or some paid resources as well uh, that we'll, we'll recommend to you. All right, uh, so just before I do get started into the webinar outline, if you do need anything, uh, let me know. Uh, you can just type in the chat box. I'm going to keep everybody on mute because we do have a short amount of time, so just an interest of keeping things going. Um, I'll keep everybody on mute for the training session, or for the webinar, I should say. Um, and if you do have any questions about, you know, Microsoft 365 or Office 365, let me know. Uh, if your questions are more of a technical nature, so if you're running into um, any issues with seeing my screen or hearing me or anything like that, uh, you can definitely use the chat as well, but direct your questions to uh, Melanie, Melanie Zilzer. Sorry, Ziltner. That's my mistake. Um, yeah, so that's perfect. Okay, sounds good. Um, and we will go through the outline. So what we're going to be learning today, first of all, uh, we do have, so Office 365 is a very large suite and a lot of stuff interacts with other pieces in Office 365. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break Office 365 down into a very, um, very logical chunks of information. So uh, first we're going to talk about communication tools where I'm going to give you some information about Teams and Kaizala. Uh, if you haven't heard of Kaizala, it is a nice secure mobile communication platform. Um, I'll give you a little bit about Skype for business, but that one's kind of heading out right now. So I'll, I'll hold off on that one. I'll just give you some information. Topic number two is going to be our collaboration tools. So we will be talking about Yammer, which is kind of like the Facebook for uh, corporations. And we'll also be talking about uh, Delve and OneDrive, which are very complementary to one another. Well, at least Delve is complementary to, to OneDrive. So OneDrive, uh, a lot of people just think of it kind of like an online storage, and it's not quite that. It is a collaboration tool, uh, so you are able to share your documents and work on documents at the same time. Whereas Delve, on the other hand, is more like a, um, almost like a discovery tool for documents that, either the documents that you, you use most often or maybe somebody else in your organization kind of accesses uh, documents so you can actually see what other people are working on and that sort of thing. So Del Delve is a very nice uh, tool to discover different types of documents. Uh, next, we do have our presentation tools, so topic three. Uh, so we're all probably familiar, or at least have seen one, once or twice a PowerPoint uh, deck or a slide deck. So I will just give you a couple of little things that I do like about PowerPoint, but there is a new one on the market for Microsoft as well called Sway. Um, Sway is more of a story-based uh, presentation tool uh, and it doesn't even have to be a presentation tool it can just be kind of like a document almost like an online pamphlet that you hand uh, either externally or internally to help people with their jobs and that sort of thing you'll get more about that when we go in and finally I'm just gonna 
I'm going to uh, go into topic four, which is project management tools. Um, I will skip over the obvious one, which is uh, Microsoft Project. That one is going to be a very large topic, too, too big for an hour today, but we do have quite a few uh, trainers in our organization that all are ex excellent at Microsoft Project. So um, if you do want to check out some of our project courses, that would be a good time to, to take a look at that. But what I will be focusing on our Outlook tasks and planner. Uh, so Outlook tasks being the kind of classic, it's been around forever. Uh, planner being kind of the new kid on the block. And it's excellent because it allows you to do things if you're familiar with kind of agile project development, it's not going to be as robust as some of the other tools there, but it's a nice quick way of organizing different tasks uh, that you might be working on with your team. All righty, so we are going to flip over. Um, I do just want to show you here, we do have, I'll show you many ways to contact us, but we do have um, two different sections uh, that you can call to to contact us. So you can see there's CompUEs for Ottawa, Quebec, uh, National Cap Capital Region, and we also have across Canada. Uh, so that info I'll put up at the very end as well, and I'll give you some other ways of finding that information as well. So we are going to head, and I'm not going to waste a lot of time. I am just going to go straight into Microsoft Office Home. This is your online portal. So if you do have a 365 license, uh, you will get all of your apps here. There are way too many apps to go through uh, today in just one hour, but we are uh, going to go through all of them. By the way, just to mention, if you do have questions, I'm just going to reiterate, please, please, please just type them into the uh, the chat box there, and I will make sure to read those. If I don't get to them right away, it's because I'm trying to keep the presentation rolling, uh, so I will get to them at the very end of the course. Uh, so just keep putting those those uh, questions in there as you have them, and I'll give you some some time at the very end as well. Okay, so this is your online por portal. Uh, I am going to start off this presentation by mentioning Skype for Business. Uh, it is no longer a thing. <laughs> well, it is a thing. It is a thing, but it is uh, losing its support in 2021. Um, so just keep that in mind. The support is going to be kind of not there anymore. Uh, so where it has rolled into is Microsoft Teams. Okay, so Microsoft Teams being this one down here, although that's the online version. I've got the, the, the full application up in front of me so that I can help you out with that. Um, so Microsoft Teams is actually going to be a great place to do things that you would typically do for Skype for Business. It's all in the chat box, so all of the features and actually quite a bit more um, are in Microsoft Teams. So let me just explain that a little bit. Again, today's course, the focus is going on an overview, right? So we do have other webinars coming up with Microsoft Teams specifically in them, and we also have courses that will teach you all about uh, Microsoft Teams. But today's course, I'm just trying to give you a good sense as to what each different application does, okay? So Microsoft Teams, it does, like I said, it does have the chat options, so you can actually choose a person to chat to. You can start typing in um, messages in here and people will see that pop up on the screen and they'll be able to respond. Uh, so that's very similar to um, Skype, the old Skype for Business. Uh, what's different though is all of that conversation is going to be persistent, which means that it doesn't really go away. Uh, so you can actually have this conversation right now. Uh, you can actually start up a video call, an audio call, or a screen sharing se session, and this chat is going to happen at the same time. You'll also be able to have up to 200 people in a given uh, audio or video call or screen sharing se session, so really there's no limits. Actually, I think the last number I saw was 250, so they're always expanding their, um, I guess, their, their capacity within this. Um, one thing to mention as well is that Office 365 is a, um, an iterative approach to software development. What I mean by that is they're constantly um, sending out updates to all of the Office 365 apps. So Teams, the way it is right now, core features will remain the same, but they're always adding some new stuff and some 
fixes to it almost every month. They seem to be doing that. Okay, so that's your chat. You can also add files in your chat. Uh, but really, the most important part about the Teams is this Teams portion of the application. So you'll notice, actually, that you've got different teams on the left-hand side here. So I've got the project management team, uh, coffee knowledge base, told you as a coffee nerd, uh, finance, marketing, that sort of thing. And all of these teams, people will join based on their interest, right? So uh, only, the, only the teams that they want to see, they'll see. Uh, and you will also notice that you'll be able to do things within the channels, which are kind of like the sub, sub teams, almost the sub groupings in here. So uh, you can have the team conversation. So for example, if I wanted to have a conversation about, you know, project management process improvements, this post area for process improvements is a perfect place to do that. So these teams and the channels, they're really dedicated towards achieving a common goal and collaborating on that common goal. You will also notice that you don't just have uh, chatting, you'll also be able to do things like work on files. So you'll see here we have the uh, Draft Excel project planner. I can only imagine that the use case for this is of course it's a project management team uh, so they're thinking maybe they should probably start um, creating some documents that will help with their, their process, right? Uh, so they uploaded this nice project planner file. Uh, it's an Excel, it's a Gantt chart um, for Excel. And not to confuse you too, too much because this is actually just a standard Excel document. And as you can see, you can actually collaborate on this Excel document in real time. My name is student one and my student two user, so the other account, so I've got a second laptop going right now, uh, you can see is actually logged in to this workbook. And depending on your internet speeds, um, you will also be able to see uh, things like the cursor popping up. So you can see here, student two's cursor is up at the very top left of that Excel document here, which is great. Just means that people can you know, collaborate on these documents in real time together. Now this is an Excel document, it's not limited to Excel. You can use it in Word, you can use it in uh, PowerPoint, all of the classic Microsoft applications. However, there's also the option of adding in things for either newer Microsoft products or even things that aren't Microsoft products. So let me give you an example of that. So in here, underneath my general channel, so just kind of like a, a general, uh, you can see there's a website development tab here that I've created within Teams. By the way, all of this information on how to create these types of tabs, that's all in my Teams course. So if you do want to join my Teams course to learn how to do all of this stuff, but here's just an overview. Um, you can see the website development tab has a planner board here. Uh, and so in the planner board, you can actually see whose work and the cards that we have, which represent pieces of work. We're going to go over planner a little bit later on today. But this is the planner application that's now working within Teams. So you can actually just have a particular channel that has nice planner boards in it. And it's nice and integrated between the planner application and the Teams application, as you can see here. Uh, just a quick overview. You can see I've got my personal work, blue team work, and these are the work pieces for blue team. Uh, I've actually got a completed piece of work here underneath my personal work, but you can also in Planner do things like group it by progress, which you can see not started in progress and completed. And you can also group it by label, so project management team, development team, analysis team, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's the Planner application. We're going to go through that in a bit more detail, but it's really nice that you've got the Planner application directly within a team in the Teams application. One last mention that I'll mention about Teams, another nice thing about Teams among, amongst a lot of different things, as you can see, there's a calendar here. So that calendar is actually going to be um, integrated with your Outlook calendar. So anything that you have in, in Outlook, you'll also see here in Teams and vice versa, anything in Teams you will see in Outlook. You can see here that I've actually got a lunch and learn meeting that's happening now. So if I click on join, I can choose to have my audio and my video. Um, so I can, I can choose, let's just say video here, uh, and you can hit join. Sorry, this is, uh, this is my kind of 
makeshift office for <laughs> for COVID. And you can see here uh, my second computer that's going on off to the left over there. Uh, that is going to have the, the video going, so you're going to have a nice little video chat in here. Uh, what's really nice about Teams is that any of the history as well, if you're recording, if you're taking meeting notes, anything like that, any of the chat, that will all end up back in the team after this meeting is done. So once I do turn off this meeting and hang up the meeting, you'll see that I had associated that meeting with the project management team general channel. And you can see all of the history of that meeting ends up in that general channel. Uh, so that's really quite nice. You can see who attended over here. Uh, if you did have any meeting notes, any recordings, that would also show up in this history here. So you can actually access it there. Any chat will show up in this history here that was happening on the side, that sort of thing. Okay, just to keep this moving, I am going to move out of Teams. Teams I could quite literally spend hours on, and I do. Um, I love Teams. I think it's an amazing application. If you have any more questions about Teams, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, again, just promoting that, uh, that Teams course. Okay, moving on, just a quick mention about Kaizala. One thing to mention about Kaizala is that it was meant for a mobile phone, okay? So um, what I mean by that is that it's kind of, if you've ever used WhatsApp, it's very, very similar to WhatsApp. In fact, last time I checked, I believe WhatsApp was also owned by Microsoft. But anyways, I digress. I could be wrong about that. Uh, it looks a lot like WhatsApp, and it's just kind of like a secure version. Um, so you can see here I have this nice little chat going on with Amina Kulik here, and you can see that I've got actually a meeting that's set up in Kaizala. The meeting is going to be through the phone, of course, if I do join that meeting. You can type out messages. You can attach things like photos, videos, documents, but you can also attach things like announcements or um, some job aids. You've also got meetings in here. You can take quick polls and that sort of thing. Uh, so it's almost like just a very basic chat application, but it has a couple more professional features into it. Okay, so that's your, your Kaizala application. Again, I've got the web version up here, uh, but really it's very targeted to be used on a mobile phone. By the way, just a quick mention, Teams application is also completely uh, mobile friendly. So everything that you do on your computer in Teams, almost everything I should say, 99% of things that you do in Teams, you can also do on your mobile, mobile phone. All right, so we are moving on a little bit. So those are your communication tools that you have in Office 365 are the ones we're gonna highlight today. Uh, next, we're gonna go into our collaboration tools. So if I do click on the Yammer tab up here, I've got Yammer up, and you can actually see if, I don't know if you're a big Facebook user or anything like that, but kind of like the layout is almost the same. You can see at the very top, this is where you would post something. Um, in here, you can see all of the posts that are happening. The only thing is, the only people that have access to these posts and this information are the people that are in your organization. Um, so here, you can see that I have some callouts. I, I've copied somebody on a callout so they get a notification. Um, I've also got, you know, some suggestions in here. Uh, I've also got some appraisal, <laughs> some appraisal or some praise for somebody. Uh, so you can see student two, I can see here's an exceptional job. Uh, I've also got this nice little poll that I put in here. So I can, I can go in here and then everybody um, in the team can click on one of these to vote. And finally, there's also documents that you can put in here. Uh, now Yammer is not limited to just one big board. It also is group based, so you can see here, on the left hand side, I've got, you know, process improvement groups. So people can post directly to the pro process improvement group. And I've also got Office 365 training, which is just one that we came up for for one of our training courses here. Uh, so just very, very simple to post a, a, a something, anything uh, like questions or polls or phase or praises and that sort of thing. Uh, I'll just post an update. Just landed our biggest contract 
yet. And then I can hit post. Maybe I don't want this to go into process improvements. So maybe I can just say, oh, I'm not able to delete that right now. Anyways, we will just post it to process improvements for now. Um, I would have to go to the top level and that would be how I would post it there. Anyways, let's post it. Now everybody in the organization will be aware of these things. Uh, this application I will mention is more for a larger organization just simply because, you know, in, in a small organization, I've worked in a lot of them, uh, information flies really quickly. Um, in a large organization, information doesn't really move up and down the chain as quickly. So uh, this is really a tool to be able to move information up and down the chain very quickly. Uh, so whether you're, you know, starting a process improvements group so that senior management can just see people's suggestions, or maybe you're starting an announcements group to see, uh, to share, you know, your, your victories as a team to uh, more frontline workers and that sort of thing, that is where you would use Yammer. So that's one of the uh, collaboration tools that we have. We are gonna move on now to OneDrive. So switching gears a little bit, I know they're both collaboration tools, but this one's more towards, you know, writing documents and doing document work. Uh, so in here, let me just switch over onto my, on my other computer here as well. Okay, in here, I can go to documents. I've got a bunch of documents in here. Uh, I'll go into my Office 365 webinar. And as you can see, it's a folder structure just like you're used to on your desktop. The only difference is it's online. Now, I have done a little bit of research, not a, not a lot of research, and I'm not a network professional, but uh, I do know that these things can also be hosted on internal servers, so not necessarily always um, internet-based. It can also be your own servers, but OneDrive is gonna be nice so that you can collaborate on different files. I've got four different folders here. Three of the four different folders are private, as you can see on the right-hand side here, uh, meaning I'm the only one that can see them. One of them is shared. Now you can either share individual documents or you can share folders, entire folders, as I've got done here. Uh, and doing that is just a matter of clicking on the three dots and hitting share. Really quite simple. You would choose then who you would like to share uh, it with, or sorry, what level of sharing I should say, and then who you would like to share it with. And then finally, if you wanna put a message in. Um, now anybody that does receive the shared uh, folder will be able to access it through their own OneDrive account. Also, they will get an email that will pop up and it will give them a notification that they now have access to that folder. What's really nice about this, oh, you can manage it as well. So let me just show you that real quick. Three dots, details, and you can see everybody that has access and you can hit manage access and you can give the different types of access. So you can see direct access is student one, uh, but there's also a link here uh, in, in this area here so that I can actually just copy and paste the link and send that manually to people if I would like for them to be able to access it, if they happen to be outside the org organization. Excuse me, all right. Now going into the team folder, you'll notice that this is gonna be very similar to what we looked at in Teams. So when I click into a file, here, uh, first of all, this is a shared file. You can see student two is also editing. So my other computer there is also editing. Uh, and it actually goes down to even where the cursor is placed. Uh, so my, my second computer is being slow, so it's not showing it, but my cursor is here. You would then see the cursor pop up uh, and any changes that you are making uh, are going to be popped up. Now, some people do like the web versions. This exact same thing is, the, is what we were seeing in Teams as well. Um, so these are both, oh, there's the cursor popped up. Um, so these are both the web version of Excel and they would be the web version of Word, PowerPoint, all of the classic apps, but you can also just open them up in a desktop application. With an Office 365 um, subscription, if you do open it up in a desktop application, 
you will get the exact same features. So you can see when I hit open it up in desktop app, open Excel. Give it a second. Now you are in the full version of Excel, and you're also seeing the cursor where student two is. Any changes that student two made would be up to the minute as well. Um, and the same thing vice versa. If I made any changes, then student two would also see the changes in their document. Uh, so OneDrive is a good way of collaborating on documents because then as you are making changes, other people are seeing those changes in real time. Okay, so that's pretty well all I've got for OneDrive. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the only last mention is uh, SharePoint as well. So SharePoint is kind of a larger system, very, very similar. Uh, OneDrive was more meant for personal storage and then you can share them out. Whereas SharePoint, uh, sorry, SharePoint is more, um, I guess, directed towards um, team pages and stuff like that where you are then um, setting up the permissions ahead of time for a given page. You've got kind of a purpose for that page and then you can use that page by adding files and other information to those pages. So SharePoint is more robust, uh, whereas your OneDrive is more just for personal documents that you decide to then share and work on with the team. Okay. Okay. So, very final thing that I'll mention with collaboration is Delve that we've got here. So Delve is going to be kind of like an add-on to all of these things. Anytime that you're working on a document, as long as you are signed in to your Office 365 account, so even if you're working on uh, personal documents um, on your computer, like in PowerPoint or Excel, just directly on your desktop, um, or if you're working in Teams, or if you're working in OneDrive, you know, anywhere where you're working on different documents in your computer, uh, Delve is constantly taking information about what you are working on. Uh, so what you'll see in front of you when you click on the Me button, you're going to see your most commonly used documents that you've got in here. So it's going to just give you a nice, easy way of you know, finding those documents. Uh, you can also see what other people are working on. So you can see here, um, discover documents from people around you. So these are going to be what your teams are working on. So people in your organization are working on. If you are, you know, interested in a very specific person and what they happen to be working on, you can click on their name and you'll see everything that they are working on here. Um, now, all of the permissions are going to be the same as whatever limitations that you've got. So what I'm talking about is, let's say in OneDrive, you're working on a document. That document is private, so it's not shared with anyone. Um, those permissions are going to be persistent through Delve as well. So that means that if it's private, they won't even see it pop up in front of them. So it's not gonna share information that you don't want, want it to. Uh, all of the documents that you'll see in Delve are all going to be the ones that are already shared with you anyways. Of course, with the exception of your me page, because your me page is just what you see, so you can see your own uh, private documents, of course. Finally, with Delve, the last thing that I do like to point out is going to be um, just being able to save documents. So saving is really as simple as, you know, clicking on the add to favorites at the very bottom left. It kind of looks like a bookmark. So if you click on add to favorites, then you'll see in your favorites, all of the, uh, the different files that you favorited. Also, if you, you can create boards. So if I go back here, and let's just say I've got a company financials board, maybe I want to create a, a, an HR board. What I can do is I can, um, or maybe a marketing board. Let's just go with that because I've got a marketing document in front of me. Uh, so what I can do is I can click on manage boards here and I can add this to, let's say a marketing board and hit enter. I can also add this document to several boards if I would like to, but I'll just leave it as just the marketing board here. 
And now when I close that off, you can see there's a marketing board and a comp company financials board that was already there. So if I click on company financials, it's gonna show me all of my company financials documents. And if I click on marketing, it'll show me all of my marketing boards. Again, this is really good if you've got a large organization because from experience, your large organization will store documents you know, in completely different areas. Um, for example, I used to work in D&D in and we used to have just these huge folder structures and I'd have to click on six different folders to find the document that I was looking for. Uh, so just being able to create these boards means that you get to organize the documents however you feel makes sense rather than however your organization has stored uh, these documents. It doesn't change where the actual physical document is stored, but it just makes it so that it's accessible for you so you don't have to go looking for it. Alrighty, so that is your collaboration tools. I spent a bit of time on that one. Uh, so we're going to move on just quickly to the presentation uh, tools. Uh, by the way, all of the stuff that I'm talking to you today, we do have an Office 365 Fundamentals uh, course that you can check out. I will just take a look at it just at the very end of this presentation. I'll, I'll show you it on our website. If you do want to learn a little bit more about this stuff, then you can go to that. Uh, we do have some excellent trainers that do understand how to collaborate between the different applications quite well. All right, moving on to our more presentation tools. I'm gonna to start off with the, the PowerPoint just because that is what people use most often. Uh, that's what people are familiar with. So let me just show you that. So we already know that you can have, you know, your PowerPoint document. It has a bunch of numbers on it. It is good for presentations. It is still the best thing. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, it is still the best thing to use if you are giving a presentation to a group of people. Uh, the reason why is because as you can see here you have you know slides that are fairly familiar and, and and you can use it fairly quickly and easily it's incredibly customizable so you can you know customize all of the different elements on the page and that sort of thing um, so that's going to be true for powerpoint not so much with sway sway creates these very beautiful and visual documents uh, where you get to see things kind of moving around and that sort of thing, uh, but you don't get to choose a lot. A lot of it's already automatically chosen by Microsoft. So uh, you will get to add in your content, but the rest of it kind of gets done by the Sway application itself. Uh, the other nice thing about using PowerPoint for a presentation tool is you'll see, oops, again, not what I meant to do you'll see that you have this presenter view. And for those of you who have done a lot of presentations, you will probably have used this presenter view. And on the presenter view, what you get is just a your current slide. This is, by the way, if you've got two separate screens. So one, one screen facing the audience and then a second screen that is just personally for you. So on the one that's personally for you, you'll get your current slide up in the middle you'll get the next slide so that you can kind of prepare yourself for what's coming up next. If you do have any notes in your document, uh, then that will also show up on the right-hand side. Uh, you can do things in here like use a laser pointer, and then the whole audience will see that laser pointer pop up if you're trying to highlight a certain portion. Uh, you can also, let's just take that off, uh, you can also you know, zoom in on a particular portion here. Um, yeah, and so there's a lot of different tools that you've got. You've also got the amount of time that you have presented um, and that sort of thing. So PowerPoint still being the leading tool just for these big, you know, presentations that you've got where you do want to explain a bunch of stuff. That being said, if you are looking for more of a visual representation, you want it to look gorgeous, um, and, and kind of like an online pamphlet, as I was mentioning before, you can use Sway instead. So let me just go over to Sway here. I'll be up in my, I've got a few different documents that I created just as a, a prep for this. Um, and you can see there's actually a bunch of different templates. These are not created by me. These were created by Sway and there's like hundreds of them. So not just the ones that you see here. Um, and you can use those to create those nice, 
gorgeous documents. Uh, so let me just show you the one that I came up with, and I'll just give you a hint. It took me about 15 minutes to do this whole thing, and I didn't know how to use the application when I first started with it. Uh, so very, very quick and easy to use. I will click on my sway here, and you can see in the sway, all I did was I added in information, right? So I added in some text. This one is a card, it's called a card, uh, and it was a title card. So it's just kind of like the title of the document. And then I added in a picture next to it. And then I added in another card here. So I put in, you know, green coffee procurement, some information below that, and then I put in a picture. And I grouped those two cards together to say this is related information. That's it, that's all I did. I just put in information, the only reason you're seeing the fonts look a little bit different on these pages is because I clicked on emphasize for that font. That's it. So such little options uh, in here. So you can see here, the only last thing that I'll mention here is you do get a little bit of control. If you do click on your design tab and I go over to styles over here, you can see you can choose from different styles on the right hand side but they're all preset styles. You can modify them a little bit. You can hit the customize button to modify them a little bit, but that's really it. There's not really a lot that you can do. Um, and if you hit remix, it's gonna create just a brand new style for you. Um, yeah, so again, very automated, does it all for you. I'll close that off and I'll just hit play. So as you can see in front of you, very visual. And this is my hypothetical coffee company that I'm <laughs> kind of developing in the back end here. <laughs> it's not really, I'm just kidding about that, but uh, I am a huge coffee nerd, so a lot of my examples are coffee related. And as you can see, all of the movements on the screen, all of that text and how it looks and that sort of thing, even the background really was all determined by Sway. All right. So that is it for your presentation tools. I do have one last topic to go through, uh, which is your Outlook tasks and your, um, your sorry, Outlook tasks and your planner application. That was a little bit of a delay there in my brain. Okay, oh, wrong thing. So Outlook tasks, just to get us started off, uh, as you can see, these are just tasks that you set up for yourself. There is an option. Let's just say I have, for example, I've got gather requirements, define the budget and the scope, and finally implement the requirements. Um, so those are the three tasks that I have for this one project I'm working on. Uh, for the most part, they are all mine, but you can also send these out. So if, if you decided, for example, gather requirements with somebody else's task, you can hit assign task. You can choose who it belongs to. Oops, up here, student two. And then send it out. You also have the option of keeping an updated copy of this task on your list. So when somebody makes a change to their task, it will update your task in your list. Uh, and the same thing, send a status report when the task is complete. Uh, so if somebody does mark it as complete, it'll send an email to you and say, hey, this person finished the task. So you can actually send these tasks out to other people. Um, the only other nice thing about Microsoft Tasks is that you can keep track of them in OneNote. So there is a, an integration between, between OneNote and Microsoft, which is exactly what it sounds like. It just gives the name of the task in OneNote and then gives a checkbox next to it. And then if it's complete in OneNote, you'll see the checkbox will automatically uh, be checked. That's pretty well all that does. Uh, but when I send it out here, then I can assign it to other people. It's very flat. There's not a lot to do with it. Uh, you can see some very basic details in here. So in progress, completed. Um, there's also a percentage that you could maybe throw in this list. Uh, the due date, when it was modified, date it was completed, and the folder that it belongs to. Um, so not a lot of information. There is some information you can put in on the back end and you can kind of modify this view so that you can see 
other pieces of information. Again, not a lot that you can do with it. But it's really good to keep track of your own stuff, right? So if you do have a to-do list, rather than writing in a notebook every day, you can use an online version of the notebook, right? Uh, however, the one that I really do enjoy is Planner. And it is part of the Microsoft 365 suite. So I'm just going to go over to it. It is an online application, so you only are able to use it online. As you saw earlier, I was also able to bring this into Teams. So I was able to use Planner within the Teams application. Uh, so there are some integrated pieces in here. Uh, but you can see on the left-hand side, I have all of my categories. So these are the different plans that I've got here on the left-hand side here. Uh, if I click on Planner Hub, it gives me a nice quick view of everything within my website creation pro project, so not started, in progress, late, and completed. If I go into the actual project, you can see a little bit more detail. All of these buckets, by the way, I, can pre I, sorry, I, I created myself. So you can see here my personal work, Team Blue work, Team Green work, and there's a button here to add a new bucket. So if you did have more categories that you wanted to assign these pieces of work to, you could do that. Um, so that would just be adding a new bucket. Also, these cards have a lot of information in them. Right now, it kind of looks like it just says gather requirements and then who it's assigned to and maybe a due date, and that's pretty well it. But if you actually click on that card, you can see that there's so much more information in here. You've got an option for notes, You've got an option to attach different files to it. You can even add in a checklist if there's, you know, subtasks to this one large task. You can do that. Um, so all of that stuff is possible. You can even put in your priority. Uh, you've got some tags on the right-hand side, which, by the way, I customized. So project management, development, analysis, and then the defaults were just colors. Um, so I just came up with my own three new ones there. And you can see a history at the very bottom, which is quite nice. Um, one question that just came up that I think is really good for the rest of the group, so I'll just mention it now. Uh, buckets can be shared, yes. So everybody that you see up at the very top right here, these are the people that I've added to that one project. So everybody has access to this and we'll see it exactly how I'm seeing it right now. All right. Now, on the right-hand side, I can group it by bucket, which are the custom buckets that I just created. But I can also change that and just say, OK, who are they assigned to? And you can see student one, student three, student two up here. And it's changing where the cards are. I can also group it by progress. So you can see not started, in progress, and completed. right? So just how things are progressing along. Just a very quick view. There's not a lot. In here, not a lot of information, just says not started, in progress, or completed. Uh, but don't forget, those buckets that you had at the very beginning, those are customizable completely. So if you wanted those to have more details on what status they are, maybe you would want these buckets to be more status-based rather than uh, team-based. Also, you've got due dates. So this week, next week, and no date. You have labels. So project management, development, analysis, I came up with these myself. Um, you can also see there's some, some extra labels on the right-hand side that I can also use if I wanted to. And finally, priority, so important, medium, and low. So all of this information is all here, and it just depends on the view that you choose, how you're looking at those tasks. And even the ones that are completed are there. They're just hidden because they're completed, of course. Very final thing that I want to show you here in the planner application here uh, is you've got your charts, which is just going to give you some more information about how work is progressing. Uh, so you can see how many are in each bucket, how many have each priority, uh, the members that belong to each, so how many tasks that every manager has, or sorry, member has. And finally, there is a schedule view here as well, so you can see when things are due on the schedule and you can go across the different months to see how those are progressing. Uh, and you've got a week or a month view. All righty. So 
thank you everybody. That is the content. Now I do have a bunch of other stuff to mention here uh, about kind of just uh, how to go about using our free resources and, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to mention that just while I'm waiting for some questions. Uh, now, by the way, would be a great time to think of all those questions, post them in the chat box in Ring Central. So please do that. Uh, and as I'm just going through, I'll just see those uh, those questions pop up. Um, and then, so I'll go through all of the stuff about our website and then I'll come back and I'll read through the questions and just answer those out one by one. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pop over here. We're gonna take a look first at the CompuEase website. You can see up at the very top right, we've got all of our contact information there. Uh, we do have a lot of free resources to help you out with working at home. So you can see that in the middle of the page. Uh, but very quickly, you will also have things like your, your upcoming webinars underneath this button. You do have a blog underneath this button. Uh, and we do have a nice YouTube channel uh, that will have some tips and tricks and that sort of thing up at the very top. So those are some of the free resources that we are uh, giving away. But just if you want to take a look at all of them, make sure to click on the free resources link here. Uh, if you do click on your course list, it's going to give you a list of all of our courses. Uh, so this here is just kind of an abbreviated list, but if you do click on course list, it will give you a list of everything. Uh, so you can do that. Um, so remember CompuEase is Ottawa and the National Cap Capital Region. Uh, JN Software is Canada wide, but you can see we also have very similar free resources up at the very top. Uh, we also have blogs, YouTube channels, and the webinars. And finally, uh, if you click on the course list, uh, you can go into one of these to, to take a look at a specific course. But if you click just generally on the actual courses button, that will bring you to a full list of all of our courses that we offer, which you can see here. And the one that we are promoting right now is our Microsoft 365 The Essentials. So if I just click on that there, it'll bring up a description. And same thing if you click on any of the courses that you, um, that you are interested in, it will bring up a full list of everything that we teach here, as well as some upcoming dates and the price that you can see here. One thing to mention about that price is we are reducing it uh, in honor of this webinar. Uh, so we are reducing it from 350 to 299. And of course, the uh, the promo code would be I need a coffee. So if you contact us uh, just by you know contacting us using the contact information up at the very top right, and you specify I need a coffee, uh, which we all need right now, I'm sure, uh, then you will definitely get that price reduced for the Microsoft 365 The Essentials course. Um, some of our free resources, you can see we do have a YouTube channel, so all of our videos, there's my face and a lot of different ones, uh, but there's also a lot of tips and tricks. So if you go to our, uh, the last one that we uh, released was the Loom tip, so you can see using Loom to create quick, quick videos. Loom is an application that does create, you know, videos for job aids or maybe marketing materials and stuff like that. Um, also, if you click on the playlists, they are all organized by Excel, Word, Outlook, and that sort of thing. So you can take a look through all of our tips that we've put together for you. Uh, we also have a blog. So if you take a look at our blog, you can see uh, Working From Home, The New Normal is one of the ones that we um, put out most recently. Uh, so this one here just gives you, gives you some information on you know, how to work from home efficiently. Also, because we, we, we of course have distractions at home, like children and pets and that sort of thing. Also, one of my favorite ones here is the right tool at the right time. This one outlines, outlines a lot of the stuff that I went through today. So I like that blog article. Feel free to check that one out. And our upcoming webinars. So if you click on the free webinars button at the very top right, you'll see all of the upcoming webinars. So today's was the 365. We also have a Teams one coming up. We have one just as an overview of databases. And we have data into decisions, so Excel dashboards. And then finally, the last one that's coming up in September, we, we will have more coming up after that, but the last one that's listed is reducing the barriers, making your doc, documents accessible. 
So that's just an accessibility webinar that we've got going on. Any of the previous webinars that we've developed are also put out. So if you click on previous webinars on the right hand side here, that will give you a list of everything that we've done this far. And just click on the YouTube link and that will bring us bring you to the webinars themselves. Last website that I'll show you or last portion of the website that I will show you is the audit. So let me just give you the link to that audit. Copy that and put that in the chat box if you guys, oh, that's the wrong person to send it to. I'm gonna send it to everyone. There we go. It's in the chat box if you are uh, interested. So also the audit, by the way, will be in the follow up email. So if you do forget to click on it from the chat box here, you'll get it in the follow up email and you can use this to uh, contact us and we will contact you to set up a, a quick time uh, that you have available to answer some quick questions so that we can help you out with filling some of those knowledge gaps or database gaps in your company. All right, let's go to uh, the questions. There's a lot of thank yous there, so thank you everybody <laughs> right back. Uh, but the first question uh, was from Maris. How do you add pictures in Teams with a reply? That was add pictures in Teams in a reply. Okay. so. Teams we had open, uh, just depends on how the picture comes about. Uh, if you're taking a screenshot, it's really quite simple. So if you're taking a screenshot, Control Shift S is a shortcut key for a screenshot. Of course, this is gonna prove me wrong right now, isn't it? Okay, <laughs> well, I'll just use Snippet for now. Um, anyway, so if I take a screenshot, let's just take a screenshot of just this area here. Um, you can copy the screenshot and then you can just paste it in here. So that's one way of sharing a picture. Uh, the other thing is if you've got any documents, as long as you are a full user, you'll also have the attachment here. So you can actually just attach or drag and drop any documents that happen to have a picture into the new message box, either or, that would work as well. Uh, so just clicking on the attachment, and you can upload either files from OneDrive or from your computer, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so this next one is from somebody that I think put in kind of a, a short name, a pseudonym. So Periel J. Uh, what if several people work on that document? Um, so I assume that was referring to when we are in OneDrive. So if several people are working on the same document in OneDrive, that's gonna work the same way as we showed just with the two people working. Uh, so you can actually have more than just two people working within that document. Of course, things get a little bit crazy <laughs> if you've got too many people in there, uh, just because there's so many changes happening. I can tell you with Excel how it works is if you've got somebody working within a given cell, it will lock down that cell for every other user. So they won't be able to edit uh, that one cell that somebody else is working on. Um, so that's how it works in Excel. In other applications like uh, Word and PowerPoint and that sort of thing, um, the locking happens differently. Um, so it will just try, and if there's any conflicts between changes that are in the two documents, um, it will try to take whatever the last change was. Um, now I say try because things do sometimes not work the way you're expecting it to. Um, that just happens when you've got multiple people working in the same document. That being said, I've worked a lot in collaboration and, uh, and they've done a really good job, I would say, in making sure that the last edit that was made is the one that you see in uh, your up to the date, up to the minute document. Uh, Selma posted, uh, can Sway documents be used on WordPress sites? Um, that's a really good question, Selma. I actually don't have the answer to you on that one. Um, so what I will do is I'll just take a nice quick note. Um, Selma, can I just, we probably have your contact information, um, but if you if we don't reach, reach, um, reach you anytime soon. I know you don't want to post your email address to everybody here. Um, so if for whatever reason we can't find your contact information, 
then just reach out to us, contact us, and we'll, we'll get you that answer. That being said, uh, I think we probably do have your, your, your contact information, so we should be able to... Oh, perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Um, yeah, so we'll be able to get uh, that information to you about WordPress sites. All right. Um, in Planner, can buckets be shared? I think I answered that one. That one was good. Yes, everything that you see in Planner is shared. Um, lots of thank yous in there. And that was the last question. And on top of that, this is uh, the end of the time allotted for this one uh, webinar. So I do appreciate everybody being here. I am going to close it off. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach us so you know exactly where to find our contact information now, which is at the very top right of either of our websites, so JN Software or CompUEs. Uh, you can just take a look at that. So if you have any further questions, let us know. If you want to know anything more about you know, attending one of our courses, let us know. Uh, if you want to do that training and consulting audit, let us know. Submit one of these forms or just contact us and let us know. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, we will follow up with uh, an email just letting you uh, know about where the recording is placed and, and some other information as well. Thanks so much.